So, Sabrina, what is race as is typically defined? And then how, if at all, do you define it when you have to talk about it with an audience or with colleagues or with students? So one of the challenge of that question, I think, is that my position, our position, is really to have a world in which racial concepts don't refer, as philosophers would say. So when I talk about, I say, the telephone, the claim, the telephone, refers to the item, the telephone, just in case there is one, right? Mm -hmm. And we think we successfully refer to things that are in our world. We have name for things, right? Similarly, with racial concepts, if someone were to say off me, you know that podcast that we watched the other day, we listened to with that, those two people, those two philosophers talking about race, you know, the black one and, you know, the white one, those terms would refer and the audience would understand what's going on. Now, I envisage a future, to be very clear, it's a very distal future, but it's a future in which such terms just don't appear in our landscape. So on the one hand, I want to undermine and hopefully eliminate the need for such concepts. But the world that we have right now, in order for me to communicate with folks, to give the folks who are watching and listening to this podcast some sense of what's going on, I need to define my concept, right? What do I mean by race? So all of that by way to say, look, in the academy, we typically hear people say that race is, quote, a social construct, by which they mean to say that it's not the case that human beings belong to these discrete racial groups. Rather, human beings have been ascribed racial belonging to members of racial groups, right? Or rather, racial concepts of being ascribed to human beings. And we all understand that. So when people say white people, black people, and a non-color concept, Asian people, we all kind of know what's going on, right? However, it doesn't mean that there really are people in the world who are white. And here, it's very important because it's not white or black or Asian in these merely conceptual way. That is to say that we don't mean to say she's only black because of their skin color. Rather, her blackness consists in what I would say are these real metaphysically loaded stuff, like views about black people, right? That they're apt to be criminals, they're apt to be athletes, they're apt to be less intelligent, just as a matter of their evolutionary history. That's just what biology has given us. And similarly, with respect to white people, these people are white, not merely because of their skin color, but because of what white, being white consists in, being elevated, being above, being better than in these ways and that ways, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm saying all of that with respect to the social construction of race within the academy, those philosophers and social scientists who are apt to think that race is a real thing, they mean to say in that non-contentful way that there really aren't facts in the world about white people and black people and Asian people that make them so very different. There are facts in the world that make them different on account of how we have decided to construct our world, right? So we have constructed these differences, that there is a hierarchy is a matter of what we have done, that there is inequality is a matter of what we have done. And so they want to deal with race on those terms, and they say, well, someone like me and David who say race doesn't exist, we're foolhardy. Because you want to know if race exists, ask a black person in the United States, and they will answer yes. And here I'm on board. I say, yes, race does exist. But let's be very clear what we mean by race existing. Because the origin, and I think still to this day, amongst the folks, and even amongst 
fancy academics, I think that there is a sense that all the other stuff, all the other elements that go along with race, they can't help but come along for the ride. And that's the problem with this 